Thank you, uh, <laughs> Professor. On, I'm sure we will watch now <laughs> on every page. So now is the second speaker of our session. It's Chevy Kampuri. Uh, he's a PhD in early modern history from the uh, University of Barcelona. His thesis uh, was dedicated to the printer Rafael Figueroa, and uh, is now an independent researcher. And his research is uh, are on the Catalan printing press in the early modern period, the origin of newspaper and journalism, and the circulation of information, postal networks, and literacy. He will speak. Uh, about the importance of ephemera for the printing industry in the early modern period, the case of Barcelona. Thank you, Mr. Adam. Good morning. During the early modern period, the printing industry of Barcelona was not as competitive as it was in big European editorial centers like Antwerp, Paris, Lyon, or Venice. Usually, in Barcelona, the number of printing houses was small. Around 1650, there were only five of them, although at the end of the century, thanks to the growth of the economy, it reached the number of 12. In spite of that, the equipment was poor. Printers, printers had only one or two presses and only in a few cases, they had more than three. In general terms, European historians, like Don William Crickshank, have pointed out that the main difficulty for the development of book trade in Spain was the lack of capital. The financial weakness prevent printers to acquire large amounts of material, especially types. This was, therefore, an impediment to increase the production. In order to print large books, printers used to share the work among them or create companies along with other printers, with booksellers or with, or with different kind of investors. The aim, obviously, was to reduce the huge cost of production. If we take a look to the evolution of the book printing in Barcelona in 17th and 18th centuries, we will see that the average of publishing was depending on the periods of war and peace, from about 10 to 15 titles per year. Only in a few occasions, the production was over 20 titles in the same year, but it never reached the 30. Usually, the editions consist of 1,250 copies. Taking into account this small production, how is it possible that in 1700, there were 12 painting houses operating simultaneously in Barcelona, a city with no more than 40,000 people? The answer, in my opinion, is quite simple. The main occupation of the printing houses, the work that actually gave them the necessary income to survive, was not books. It was, instead, the production of ephemeral papers, that is to say, a large variety of cheap print, like broadsheets, pamphlets, letters, and especially billets. That is nothing new. Years ago, French historian Henri Jean Martin asked himself if Gutenberg, at the time that he invented mobile types, was actually working as a job in printer. According to Martin, it, it is possible that at the beginning, Gutenberg was not thinking in printing Bibles, but a great variety of single sheets that should make the work of administration easier. In fact, as we know, Books were mainly reserved to a wealthy elite who could pay for it, while cheap print was quickly produced and easily sold among the whole of the population. In the previous work on the preserved collections, including the Catalan and Spanish bibliographical catalogues, I was able to conclude that between 1605, 1650, 1650 and 1625, sorry, 1650 and 1725, the production of the printing houses of Barcelona was at it follows. 18% of books, 25% of booklets, works of less than 100 of pages, and 57% of single sheets. A more accurate analysis of the master printer Joan Piferrer, sales book, 
shows that from 1699 to 1706, the single sheet production in this printing house was up to 75%, while 16% were booklets and only 9% were books. These numbers show clearly the importance of ephemera for the Catalan printing industry. Therefore, I think that the existence of a great number of small printing houses in Barcelona was not the consequence of a lack of investment. In my opinion, it, it was the result of the customer demand itself. In fact, part of society, including both institutions, political and religious, and wealthy individuals, found in typography a faster and cheaper way to make copies of documents in a large quantity. The benefits of the use of the printing press were out of question. In 1629, for example, the City Council of Barcelona ordered the publishing of the university rules in order to give a copy to each one of the 144 members of the institution. The secretary of the council wrote a manuscript to be delivered to the printer along with instructions to make 1,250 copies of it. According to the respective payments, the manuscript cost to the council 70 times more than a single printed copy. A similar example is the payment that the Generalitat, the most important political institution of Catalonia, made in 1687 to master printer Rafael Figueroa for publishing 100 copies of a legal memorandum. In that case, the Generalitat paid £33 to the secretary for rewriting the work down by the lawyers and £25 to the printer for, th for those 100 copies. The aim of my intervention is to show that the use of printing was very useful for the administration and governability. Also, also, typography had an impact almost in every area of society, politics, economics, health, military, judiciary, religious, etc. There are a lot of examples of this, but I would like to focus my intervention in showing some cases of the use of billets a sort of a small, a small papers that contain a printed standard text and several blank spaces that were filled with a name, a date, a quantity of money, or other information. In the area of politics and administration, I would like to show this example in the first place, the billets that the City Council of Barcelona gave to its members as a gratification for the assistance to the sessions. Each time, members receive a billet to be exchanged by a pound of wax. In 1700, the council ordered five reams of paper with this billet printed on them. The text was reproduced up to 16 times in each printing sheet, the double of the size of the image shown. Considering that the rim contains 500 sheets, the total amount of printed billets was 40,000. The political institutions used to announce important events sending billets of invitation. In the example shown, the billet was delivered to invite noblemen to the ceremony of the taking of the oath by King Charles III, the Archduke of Austria in Barcelona on November 1705. This one was delivered to the noblemen to invite them to invite them to the ceremony of welcome to the Queen Elizabeth Christine of Brunswick, wife of Charles III, on July 1708. Master printer Rafael Figueroa was ordered to print 400 copies of this billet. This is an example of the use of printing for economic and commercial purposes. The promissory note. It was used, and still is, to make remote payments. The note indicated, handwritten, the maker, the payee, the sum of money, the interest rate, the deadline, and also the guarantees. The international use of the promissory note is quite clear, according to this example, printed in Italian. It was dispatched in 1608 by a merchant of Barcelona to claim an unpaid note to a correspondent of Piazenza in Italy. 
This is an example of a billet of sea transport. It was used to certificate that the merchandise was carried from a harbor to another. In this case, the billet of transport indicated that 17 barrels of pine notes had been loaded in the harbor of Barcelona in a ship with destination to Genoa in 1712. Again, we observe the international use of the billets in this example, printed in Italian. It certified that the shipment of paper was carried from Genoa to Barcelona in 1723. Printing was also used for the payment of taxes. The Generalitat of Catalonia, for example, used printed billets to control the commerce of textiles and to collect the bolla, the tax over it. Merchants and carriers were compelled to have a printed billet like this for the transport of merchandises and to show it when required. Between 1683 and 1686, the Generalitat ordered the printing of 12,000 billets like this. So it is clear that they were, were widely used. It was also important the use of printing to collect the contribution to the finances of the Spanish king. This is a letter that was sent to all the cities and towns of Catalonia in 1678 to claim the payment of a contribution of war. In that case, the Generalitat asked for 400 pounds to a small town called San Pere de Vila Major. You can see the quantity handwritten in the second line. Usually, printing houses were ordered to print up to 1,000 copies of letters like that, and sometimes even more. Printing was also used largely by the Bourbon regime in Catalonia after 1714 to collect a new duty called the Catastro. In the example shown, the City Council of Barcelona, in the name of the King Philip V, claimed to a citizen the payment of 100 pounds in 1717. In the judiciary area, it is important to say that printing was widely used in order to make the judgments of the courts public or the defense allegations from the parts. Moreover, the printed billets were especially useful to the courts to deliver, for delivering warrants, supoena, and similar written orders. This is an interesting example of supoena, not used in the way that was printed. As you can see, the same text was printed three times to optimize the work of pressmen. If typesetter made three times his job, this means that the quantity of printed copies of that sheet was high. Printing was also useful for military purposes. The best example are the billeting of soldiers. In a time with no big headquarters, soldiers were accommodated in private, in private houses. Residents and local authorities received orders with the number of soldiers to be accommodated through printed billets. The example shows the billet given by the Spanish army to the councils of the town of Villanova in Lojoltru in 1684, ordering them the accommodation of a tenant of cavalry and four of his soldiers along with, her, with their horses. In this other example, we can see the order that the governor of Girona gave to an individual in 1713 to accommodate two tenants. Again, this billet was given by the authorities of Barcelona to a citizen with orders to accommodate a captain of dragoons in 1739. No less important were the passports that allow the free movement of people from one part to another. In the image, we can see a passport produced by the Viceroy of Catalonia in 1639, giving safe passage to a soldier. Passports were printed in large quantities as well. In 1721, the governor of Girona complained that he had 500 towns under his command and he needed to use printing for issuing passports, otherwise it will be necessary to have 10 copies. The printing press was also used for health prevention. During episodes of plague, 
big cities like Barcelona strengthened the guards at the gates with the aim of preventing the entrance of sick people. To arrange the schedule, the city council delivered printed billets that indicated the name of the guard, the gate, and the date of service. The council used to print one rim of that sort of billets every year. In one single printing sheet, it was possible to print this text up to 10 times. This means that the use of these billets was nearly 5,000 per year. In a similar way, at the departure of the cities, travelers receive a billet that allow them to justify a destination that they came from a place free of play. The example shown is a model of billet that the Council of the City of Bic gave to travelers in 1720. Again, I would like to emphasize the international character of the use of printing. This example is a letter printed by order of the City Council of Barcelona. Prior of that, the councillors had received a letter from the authorities of Genoa, printed as well, preventing them from the plague, which has been declared in some Mediterranean cities. The Council of Barcelona ordered the printing of this letter and then it was sent to all the towns along the Catalan coast and to the isles of Mallorca, Menorca and Sardinia. The control of the plague was also important for the movement of ships. To travel from one harbor to another, sailors needed also, also a bill of health. This is an example given in 1716 by the authorities of Mo in the Isle of Minorca to a ship with destination to Barcelona. With this paper, travelers could justify that they came from a place free of plague and therefore that they could avoid the quarantine. This is a similar example given by the authorities of Barcelona to a man who pretend to sail, to sail in, an Engl in an English ship to Peniscola in the center east of Spain. The Bill of Health specified, written by hand, the age of the traveler, age, hair color, and physical signs. Another example is the bill given by the authorities of San Feliu de Guixos to a man who wanted to sail to Barcelona in 1765. As in the other cases, the bill certified that the place of departure was free of play. Finally, I would like to show some examples of the use of printing in the area of religion. Maybe the most important were the billets of indulgence used by the church for financial purposes. Faithful contributors got forgiveness in exchange of money. To justify their contribution, they received a billet that contained the name, of, the name and the amount of money given. This kind of billets were widely used since the first years of the printing press. You can see in the image, in the image an example from 1493. Around the year 1500, the monastery of Montserrat near Barcelona print up to 160,000 of these indulgences. Billets were also used by the church to give an attestation of the administration of sacraments. This example shows a certificate produced in 1741 by the Diocese of Barcelona to certify a baptism celebrated in 1690. Sorry. This is another certificate of, that, of baptism given by the parish of the town of Tona in 1755 to give attestation of the administration of this sacrament. The last example is a billet of communion. This one was given by the parish of the town of San Feliu de Guixos to a person who took the communion in 1719. Please observe the last number of the year is handwritten. This kind of small papers, along with the billets of confession, were used by the church as a way of religious control in order to compel people to penance and reconciliation. 
The names of the faithful who obtained a solution were written by hand on the paper. Very often, the parishes order billets like this to the printing houses in a large quantity. Those are only a few examples of the use of billets. There were other kind of short printed papers, like newspapers, teaching books, or advertising posters that were widely used in early modern period. The production of all that kind of papers was faster <coughs> and cheaper than books, and even quicker and wider was its circulation. As we have seen, this was not only an urban issue, because printed papers arrived to small towns and all along the territory, including the countryside. It was neither a local issue, it was national and even international. For all those things, I must conclude that the transmission of ideas and knowledge through the book was not the main achievement of the printing press. The most significant contribution of the use of topography to the development of early modern society were, in my opinion, this kind of ephemeral short papers that made the work of the administration and political institutions easier, <coughs> along with favorishing governability, economy, circulation of information, and territorial cohesion. Cheap print brought great benefits to almost every area of society and had a big impact on the people's current life. The contribution of ephemera to the development of modern society was the real printing revolution. Thank you very much. <laughs>